Today we're talking about materials and how to make them look like the one you just saw. What's the difference between material and texture? Material is a set of properties that defines basic stuff like objects, color, blurriness, shininess, uh, transparency. A texture is a pattern of any kind that breaks up the uniform and perfect look of the material, wood, rock, cloth. And this happens to be first tip for you. Always consider adding textures to your material. In real world, Nothing is perfect, but don't go crazy. Think about which parts of your scene will be visible to viewer and only add details if it's really necessary. Realistic textures usually equals high-res textures, irresponsible use of which will lead to unnecessary long render times. Consider this in the beginning or you will have to optimize your scene later. Let's talk about what material consists of. But before we proceed, keep in mind that I'm using Octane Render Engine for Cinema 4D. And this means that my material editor interface might be different to yours. Concept of materials creation process as well as interface structure is similar pretty much across all the softwares. So material consists of diffuse channel, which is basically your color or photo or whatever you drew yourself. Specular channel defines material's shininess. It helps specify which areas of material are more reflective and which areas are less reflective. Roughness channel kind of specifies which areas of the material are rough or worn or blurry. Bump channel adds some details to your materials, however the effect it gives is fake. It creates an illusion of surface unevenness, but in reality it does not affect geometry in any way. It uses grayscale data to pull details up or down. Usually 8-bit grayscale image is used. White areas pulls details up Grace, uh, gray areas leaves uh, surface kind of untouched. Black areas pulls details down. Next channel is called normal. It's similar to bump, but it works differently. As I already mentioned, a bump map uses grayscale values to provide either up or down information. A normal map uses RGB that corresponds directly with X, Y and Z axis in 3D space and it basically tells software how this particular material should be shaded. So this channel doesn't really do anything with geometry as well but it creates a illusion of highly detailed geometry. And this is a very important thing when it comes to scene optimization. Decent normal maps are baked inside 3D software and basically are like a 3D scan of a highly detailed mesh on a 2D texture. We won't use any normal maps today because I'll be showing you how to create decent textures using Photoshop only. Displacement maps are king in detailing low resolution meshes. These maps are actually affecting geometry. Usually with CPU render engines, traditional render engines, uh, geometry has to be subdivided in order to displacement to appear properly. Octane can displace any mesh, doesn't matter how subdivided it is, and I can use textures up to 8k, which is crazy. Displacement maps can be either be baked from highly detailed mesh or painted manually, which allows you to be super creative. Similar to bump map, displacement map consists of grayscale values but in case of displacement map, it will benefit from 16-bit or 32-bit image. It's hard to beat displacement map results, but it comes with a price of longer render times. You should always weight the expense of displacement map against the added benefit before using one. Sometimes you'll just get the same look as from normal or bump map. For this tutorial, I went out to find interesting places and objects like asphalt, walls, fences, tarmac surfaces. I will take high-res pictures of some of these objects and we will turn it into material. Whenever you're taking photos of things that you want to turn into materials, make sure 
that the weather is cloudy because you want light as flat as possible the sun is producing quite heavy shadows and this is not what you want in your textures yeah <laughs> I found a nice piece of asphalt right here, have a look. So this is like a really, really old uh, roadmark paint, which I think will look awesome with all the details in it. Now I will show you what has to be done to photo before it can be turned into high-end material. Let's open Photoshop and bring our photo up. I was taking several images of same surface, stepping one step right or left, and I was doing it to get a uh, bigger resolution. Now I need to merge and stitch those photos together and Photoshop has a brilliant feature for that. Just click File, Automate, Photo Merge. In the pop-up dialog I usually choose Perspective and as I already have all the files opened I click Add Open Files. OK. And now Photoshop is basically trying to merge all those photos together. All right, process is finished, but I feel that my asphalt texture is quite a bit kind of distorted by perspective, so I need to correct that. I'll just use regular transform tool and drag corners around. Then I'm cutting out the piece that I want to use and post produce. Here it is. Look how detailed it is. I can literally see every single rock and dent in the roadmark paint. We also have some trash in there which I would like to take out. I don't want this in here. I'm using a spot healing brush tool. After cleanup is finished I'll duplicate that layer, go to transform, flip horizontal and the reason for that is that I want this texture to be kind of seamless. I will cut away a part of the image and then I will start to just erase areas that I don't want. And now I will do a basic color correction just to improve colors a bit. All right, I will put all this stuff into one folder and we'll call this diffuse. Now I will duplicate that folder and call it bump and we will start to creating our bump map. As we already know, bump map is grayscale, so I will add black and white filter. Alright, that looks alright. I will duplicate my bump map and call the created folder specular. Now we will work on our specular channel. I assume that this roadmark paint is a bit more shiny than the rest of the asphalt. And I also think that Whenever it's raining, water stays on the bottom of asphalt's texture. How do I explain it? So water is not on top of rocks. So I invert the texture so that more reflective areas are below rock's surface. And I think this area here has to be more reflective as it would be more wet. Okay, now it's time to create our displacement map. I want displacement map to be more even in terms of uh, deformations, distribution, so I will try to even out that color here on top. I don't want it as bright as it was in the original one. Look how much details we have here, and 3D software will actually use all these data to modify actual geometry. That's all folks, I left a link below in the description where you can buy this material with all the textures for one dollar. Use it in your works, commercial, personal, whatever. Tag me in your work because I would love to see what your guys are creating. There are also a lot of pre-made textures available, cheap ones, expensive ones, even 3D scanned ones like these. But I always think that custom made texture for your particular project is better. Of course it takes more time and effort, but that's what makes you stand out. Extra effort. One last tip for you guys, and this is not something skills related. Every time I'm working on material, I'm trying to kind of feel it. This asphalt material, it actually feels like asphalt, like a wet asphalt, for sure. 
But here is another example. I love robots and this was my first ever created robot. Have a look at the texture. Its body feels like heavy painted steel. And that was the feel I was after. If by whatever reasons you don't feel right about your material, spend a bit more time trying to convince your feelings about it. Trust me, it's worth it. This will bring your works from this level to this. Also, don't forget that the lights are affecting your materials dramatically. If you don't feel right about your material, try to play with lights first. Here it is, guys. The secret of realistic textures is in manual craft and understanding of what each channel is doing and when exactly you need to use it. You have to be clever about using these things. In the little scene I created for this tutorial, I wanted to showcase as much details as possible. So I used bump, I used specular, I used displacement. But let's say I would I would want to create a more master shot and my camera would have to be further away. That way I would definitely won't use displacement map and I probably would take my photo differently from a drone or from a, a roof. And in CG scene from distance it would look real as well without any overcomplicated details in it. This tutorial was more about textures rather than materials themselves because there are many more ways of creating materials for instance in octane render there are mixed materials that allows you to add stuff that would interact with edges of your geometry in cinema 4d itself you can drop uh, textures and materials on top of each other. This thing allows you to be super creative. As usual, I hope you learned something new. Should I even mention? Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Peace.